originally got involved in the school choice program because um, our families have always been low income, primarily Hispanic, but also African-American families that can't afford private school. We never kicked people out because they couldn't pay. We let them pay what they could. Um, but at the time, I was a classroom teacher. I was the principal. I was the secretary. I was the fundraiser. Um, so when choice became available to us in Madison, we jumped on it because we knew this would be the only way to offer even more spots to the students that wanted the option, that wanted a choice. As soon as the special needs program opened, we hopped on that as well because we have students, we always had students with special needs. The challenge, of course, is that it's just not quite enough to do what we would like to do. And one example is teachers. Um, our teachers get paid far less than the school district. And they're doing incredible, amazing things with very little resources. Every year we're looking at how do we make up the $250,000 gap from what we want to pay our teachers to what comes in. Um, and so we way overspend the, the choice amount um, and try to fundraise the rest. Um, we, need, we have 200 kids on a waiting list. We need a new space. We have the property to do it. We need to build a building. We can't run a referendum for the city and see if we can make $15 million. We have to raise that money all on our own. But obviously it would be helpful to have additional funds to really do all the programming that we have in mind to do. In order for a student to qualify for the special needs scholarship program, they do have to have an IEP and that is done through the school district. And with that, um, as private schools, we do not have to implement the IEPs, but what Lighthouse does is we use that IEP as a guide in creating an individual learning plan for the student here at Lighthouse. Um, for example, we had a student uh, that came to us as a second grader that had um, cerebral palsy and she was in a wheelchair and this was all like new territory for us. And so we did not have automated doors. Um, we have ramps, there's no stairs or any of that, but there was like, oh, it'd be great to have automated doors. Well, in order to get automated doors, you need funding for that. And automated doors would be great in allowing the student to be independent in opening the door by herself versus having to um, meet someone with her as she maneuvers around the school teaching her to be more independent in the classroom of going from her wheelchair into a chair, um, going from the chair down to the ground, into the, uh, the carpet with the, the rest of the group as the um, routine goes on. Um, there are the needs of, you know, having um, specific type of tools, you know, um, specialized scissors, specialized pencil grips for her, kind of just a variety of things that she needed. Where as, you know, we learned more about what her abilities were and how to help her through that, it was, okay, let's see what more we can get for her. So it's like larger print books, um, larger items that would be easy for her to grasp. We have 23 um, special wow. needs scholarship students. We never deny anybody, um, as big as their disabilities might be, we always offer, you know, here's what we can offer. We'd love to have you, but at this time we are limited. And that's always heartbreaking to have to tell families that want to have a choice, that they might have to choose between a great school environment versus um, the special needs assistance that their student needs.